silverware. It's, uh, it's everywhere. For as long as humans have been around, we've needed something to scoop food up into our mouths. And the amount of choice you have doing that is pretty overwhelming. Over the past month, I've become pretty obsessed with silverware, and I've bought a bunch of different types to see what makes the best stuff. Is it, does it matter where it comes from? What kind of materials? And is it all style, or does it matter what the shape is? So come along with me as I review silverware and probably the most excessive video on YouTube in existence. My interest in this spiked many years ago when I saw this Modern Marvels episode of this man tasting ice cream with a golden spoon. Pure vanilla. Mm. I found this man and his spoon utterly fascinating. Mm. I had to, of course, emulate this with my own golden spoon. Sweetness. And that's when I started getting obsessed. As you can see, I've been swallowing more than I should. <laughs> it's so good. It's so good. Vanilla. And that's what led to another seemingly arbitrary obsession with a household item. By the way, I know it's not really silverware, but that's what most people call it. It's actually flatware or cutlery. I could most definitely not afford the sterling silver. The things that were really important for me were country of manufacture, the quality of materials, and the overall style mixed with the utility of it. Now, it's really hard not to find something made in China for silverware. So I decided to go to Costco Business because I've always seen it and I was curious what was inside Costco Business. This stuff was surprisingly made in Brazil, but um, yeah, it was not durable at all. It was really easy to bend. So this is the industrial silverware at the commercial restaurant store. Made in China. China. I thought maybe the restaurant supply store would have better stuff, but their stuff was definitely all made in China. And the silverware in my kitchen is actually this gold stuff here. It's from Target. It's made in China and it pretty much works just fine, but I, I definitely wanted to see if I could do better. The first set I found that really intrigued me was the Jorg Jensen silverware. And this stuff is just wild looking. I mean, it was even used in the movie Space Odyssey 2001 to look futuristic. Because it was a Danish company, I figured, you know, this is a, this will be cool. I found it. Produced in People's Republic of China. It really kind of takes the teeth out of your product when it's not made in the country that you have stamped on the silverware. It's also not the highest quality steel, only coming in at 18.8. But what it does have is style. The only thing is, is the forks are really weird. So instead of the traditional four tines, you only get three. Uh, so these things end up feeling like little, little tiny baby spheres. But actually, I surprisingly kind of enjoyed this set because of how thin it was. It has kind of a casual essence to it when you pick it up and it feels very utilitarian. And the knife actually cut very well, surprisingly. Oh wow, this one cuts really well. The next set I got in the mail was actually from the USA. It was Liberty Tabletop. Everything they have is from the USA, including that where they source their steel. So I was just excited to check them out. Stop! Wash flatware before use. Okay, I guess it's like straight off the factory line. 25 year manufacturer's warranty. So here is the butter knife. It's actually really nice. I don't know if that translates on camera, but um, this is like a really hardy piece of silverware. Now this is actually the industrial set I got off their website, but they have a lot of uh, different styles that you can choose from. I just like going minimal. The set feels incredibly durable. One, because it's using 1810 steel, which is some of the best you can put in flatware, but also because it has like an arch in the design for this one, which creates extra strength. Look what happens to my chintzy Target flatware when I bend it. That's because it's using some sort of super low quality steel. I really have no complaints about this stuff. It 
it's the style is essentially the same you would see in like a, a nice commercial cafeteria it's very comfortable the four tines are great the polish is good it's kind of boring because it just works really well i wish that they would make slightly more interesting silverware that's the only thing i have a critique for them i I just think most of their designs are very conservative and boring. And I don't mean just decorating the spline or whatever you call it. You fundamentally need to play with the look and feel and style. And I find this Celtic one very dumb. I mean, there's a pot of gold and it has chocolate covered American Kennedy dollars. Uh, come on. And the next set we have is almost twice as expensive as the others. It's the Mepra set from Italy. Now these are called the style set. I don't know why, but I just really like the way they looked. Whoa. This looks like it was maybe used before, I don't know. Ironically, these had the worst packaging of all, and uh, they came a little scuffed. For being the most expensive, I was very disappointed. The fork feels nice, I like that handle. It's like kinda, kinda beefy, it feels like it might be hollow. And a spoon. Why are these so expensive? Was exactly what I was wondering. Because these were so much more expensive, I looked at the silverware a little bit more deeply to see if there was something better about the polish or the build, and it was kind of hard to tell a significant difference. Looking at all of them, the only one that was obvious was the Target brand stuff. They are 1810 steel, so that is good, but everything else about them seemed like maybe it was just more of what style you like the most. You can see here that the Liberty Tabletop tie ends look a little bit better polished than the Mepra, but no clear winner there. So I'd say spending more money doesn't really make a big difference to a certain point. Which brings us to our most reasonably priced flatware, this set by Soriyanagi. It features a really interesting kind of chonky design to it, and it's made in Japan, and it's 18.8 steel, and it features this adorable little Martian character on it, which I kind of love. The build quality felt above average overall to me. But because it's so much wider, you were able to get a lot more real estate on what you were scooping up. So excellent for eating big chunks of food. And with the fork being so wide, it kind of had like this rowboat paddle power to it if you really needed to move a lot of food around. I also found it kind of interesting that such good Western silverware could come out of Japan where they used chopsticks all the time. But regardless of how and why, I like them. So now that you've seen all the sets that I got, it's time to tell you my conclusions about what I really thought about all these guys. I'd say my favorite spoons were George Jensen and the Liberty Tabletop, simply because they actually fit in my mouth. The Yori Sanaga and Mepra actually were just a little wide and didn't fit well. I was actually thinking the George Jensen's were not going to be good spoons, but it turns out that they actually have quite a bit of real estate on them and they weren't bad to use at all. In terms of forks, I felt like the Liberty Tabletop was definitely the most comfortable just because of the handle, and the rest were fine. It's just the George Jensen ones just super awkward with three tines, not super useful. You kind of end up having to learn how to eat differently with those. For knives, I'd say the one that felt the best in my hands was actually the George Jensen. I actually really liked that knife, and it cut really well. The others were okay. Um, the Liberty Tabletop was super comfortable, uh, again with the comfort. The Mepra just didn't really impress me much, and the, the Soriyanagi was fine. It's just weird getting used to such a thick knife. The sets that really spoke to me were the George Jensen set. I just, I love the styling of them. I loved how thin and utilitarian they were, except for the stupid forks. The, the forks were not the best but I loved the rest of the set actually quite a bit. I found myself wanting to pick them up and use them quite often. I felt like the best value out of all of them was the Sori Yanagi set, just because it's made in Japan and it was well made. They're just a little unusual how wide they all are. If you're really just going for like a, a no frills, great set, the Liberty Tabletop definitely stands out for that. Like they make good stuff. It's that 1810 steel and the price was relatively reasonable. I felt like those are probably your best bang for your buck if you're not looking for anything super stylish. And the Mepra style, just, uh, they're just like twice the price of everything else. And I know they're also well made, but I just don't feel like they were worth it. I feel like they were kind of a rip, to be honest. 
Could a seemingly inanimate object elevate my experience in the kitchen? Could it bring some sort of joy to my life that I hadn't had before? Or was I doing it because it was a small piece of my life that I felt like I actually had control over versus everything else? Perhaps if you've also watched this video to the end, you would agree that we probably all just need to go outside now and stop obsessing about small pieces of metal that shovel food into our mouths. Sometimes you just gotta move on and just whatever works, so. You get a, a platinum star if you watch to the end of this video, so let me know if you actually made it to the end. And uh, I guess I'll see you guys in the next video. I think I'm gonna take a short break after this one though, so. Thanks for watching, and uh, let me know what you think. See ya!